Hi everyone, it's uh, been a while. I'm Alex, and welcome to an extremely overdue devlog and update. So, a bit of context. Uh, last August, I released my mini Metroidvania Psychron on Steam. It started out as a high school capstone project, which kind of snowballed into something much, much bigger. I worked on this game over the course of about two years with my friend Henry, who, along with helping on some general design stuff, created all the music and sound effects for it. It's the first game of its scope that I've actually finished and released, with most of the projects I'd worked on beforehand being tiny game jam games. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the final game turned out, even if I'd never want to play it again. Near the end of its development, I dropped a couple Psychron devlogs, and then kind of peaced out. Well, partially. I released a few patches for Psychron, fixing some, uh, interesting bugs, and made a couple sketches to announce that Psychron was on sale for an audience of, uh, people who had probably already bought Psychron. Masterclass in marketing. After production wrapped, I'd originally planned to make a series of videos chronicling the game's development, from its start all the way back in late 2019 to its release last year, but I uh, kind of passed out for five months. A few days ago, at the time of writing, uh, I, along with an expanded dev team, released a brand new game onto itch.io. It's a tiny puzzle platformer called Brothers DX and was released with zero buildup, advertisement, or fanfare. While it's pretty simple and uh, kind of stupid. There's a surprisingly interesting story behind all of it. So let's dig into why I wrote a custom game engine from scratch in C Sharp to remake a four-year-old extremely average game jam game. June 2021. Psychron is entering its final few months of development, and my brain is fried. Stress from university and a looming job hunt that's part of my degree's work experience program was hitting me pretty hard. This combined with a game that I've been working on for close to two years at that point, with said game carrying a lot of baggage and, we'll say, uh, interesting technical decisions, as a result of its original release date being overshot by about 14 months. The more of a brick and less of a straw, which finally broke this camel's brain, was dealing with Game Maker Studio 2's audio system. A good chunk of the audio work for Psychron had been done at this point, and after a playtesting session, which kind of demolished our eardrums, uh, that's the projectile shooting sound. You can hear it. Uh, we can't use these because they're both from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Henry, aforementioned sound guy, wanted to go through the game and mix everything. A reasonable thing to want to do, but Game Maker doesn't have any sort of global sound mixer besides these dinky sliders on each individual sound asset. So it was up to me to build one. I asked him for a list of all the things he needed and Henry got back to me with a bunch of stuff that couldn't be done and volume sliders, which I thought would be pretty straightforward and simple. When building out the back end of the mixer, I was putting a lot of faith into this one line from the Game Maker manual. It says that while you can set the gain of a sound higher than one, whatever one means to Game Maker, it's not recommended as it may cause clipping. Whatever, we say. Because Henry, who thought ahead, has left headroom in all 207 sounds so that they could actually be mixed up later if needed. I thought this was a solid plan and it would have been if the manual wasn't lying. Turns out that trying to increase the gain of the sound past one actually does nothing. Hmm. So, needed a solution for this. I ended up defaulting every sound of the game to start at 0.5 so Henry could actually mix upwards. This hack sounds pretty obvious in retrospect, but I'm glazing over a lot of spent time and unnecessarily strained ears. It was genuinely kind of maddening having this not work, and it's just one part of the mixer. I'm glossing over all the other components which were equally time consuming and frustrating, such as building a list of every sound asset in the game, making a usable mixer front end, reading and exporting volume levels, handling distance based ambient sounds. God, this was a pain in the f And just trying to make mixing sliders work. You get the point. All this because I had to create a basic mixer, which I really feel like should be part of the engine. This doesn't even get into things like side chaining and basic compression, which is less important, but still kind of crucial to keeping a clean mix. And unfortunately, with Game Maker's built-in audio engine, this was just not going to happen. You might have gleaned by now that all this frustration had driven me slightly nuts. I'm trying to release a game on Steam, and the sound designer cannot do his job because the engine we're using is still lacking basic things like a mixer. And of course, like this on its own would be a deal breaker. But at this point, it was really a feeling of death by a thousand paper cuts. Pause the video if you want to read some of my really granular nitpicks. There were also a lot of weird stability issues which started popping up around the beginning of 2021, with some releases of Game Maker being randomly more inclined to crash than others. A lot of the new features that were being introduced were great, but it was usually a trade-off between getting something incredibly useful, like almost classes, 
versus potentially losing a bunch of progress because Game Maker Studio 2 has become unstable and needs to close, or usually just this fucking window. There's also the problem with Game Maker's extension support. Have you or anyone you love attempted to extend Game Maker with DLLs? If so, you should be entitled to compensation. Editor's note, DLLs are kind of like a way to share code between different applications, so both your game and your image editing program can both use the same code to load in PNGs. Remember how annoyed I was slash am with Game Maker's lack of sound mixer? There's this really fantastic piece of software called FMOD Studio, which would have sidestepped all of that. FMOD is a multi-platform audio engine which gives your sound designer a lot more control over the way your game runs audio. And as a programmer, it's great because I just need to tell it to play an event and Henry becomes responsible for having the event figure out what to do with its life. It would allow him to easily mix and master all of the audio, sidechain sounds to give us a cleaner mix and apply dynamic effects in real time like reverb and equalization. The Game Maker, however, However, has zero native support for it. Shoutouts to this script being fucking outdated. Game Maker has just announced there's gonna be FMOD support. Thank you, yo yo. And I tried. I really tried to get FMOD working with Game Maker, but it just wasn't happening. While not impossible, the act of trying to add an extension and get it working was a nightmare. Thanks to basically non existent documentation and a really frustrating workflow. Look, here's a terminal window I had that was set up and connected to FMOD Studio. It was working. Effects and everything. FMOD in C was working. But I could never get it hooked up to Game Maker. I was not expecting the easy part of a project involving C++ to be writing the C++. And at this point, I was also a year and a bit of the way through a computer science degree. And you know what? Having been exposed to them, I kind of liked working with languages that weren't GML. Static typing, pointers, constructors with different parameters, for each loops, for each loops, for each loops. Bad. And not dealing with Game Maker's aforementioned quirks, we're all sounding pretty appealing at the moment. Near the end of Psychron's development, I had Henry write a wish list for what he wanted in the next game's audio engine. And after looking over it, I knew it was just not going to happen in Game Maker. Combine this with their switch to a subscription based model, thanks, Opera! Without even finishing my last game in it, for the first time in, god, eight years, I was starting to look towards non Game Maker horizons that and wanting something kind of cool to be able to stick on my resume. So, no more Game Maker. But where do you go from here? There's no shortage of game engines out there, but actually narrowing down which one would work the best for our team was kind of tricky. The first step was figuring out what kind of games we wanted to make, or at least see ourselves making in the foreseeable future. Despite the 3D in my username, our future looks pretty 2D pixel art based, with the need for a fancy audio engine to let Henry sidechain to his tiny little raisin heart's content. Oh. Cost is also an important factor, as we're students and don't have a ton of disposable income to pour into whatever we settle on. So the first contender was... Unity, the engine seemingly every developer loves to use and every gamer loves to hate. It's a pretty decent engine, if you're doing 3D. While it's improved a lot in recent years, their 2D support has always kind of felt like an afterthought to me. There have been a lot of successful 2D games made in Unity, like Hollow Knight and the Ori series, but a lot of them aren't going for the same look and style that we are. I think both of these still use Unity 3D with an orthographic camera. Either way, doing pixel perfect games in Unity is kind of a pain in the ass. These problems aren't insurmountable, but combining them with their slightly questionable track record of just breaking shit and making half-baked replacement solutions left me kind of concerned about using it long term. And I'm a student and don't really have the cash to pay however much per month it costs to get rid of this screen. Hi, quick addendum from future Alex here. Uh, the Made in Unity splash screen does not make a game worse. I just personally don't want it and there's no way to turn it off without paying uh, quite a lot of money. Also, no Unity discussion is complete without mentioning the cylinder collider conundrum. This will never not be funny to me. Our next candidate was... Unreal Engine 4. Now, five, that's how long this has been in the works. Oops. It's home to some of the most graphically impressive games and projects across the entire entertainment industry. And Mario's standing in a field with a realistic deer. It's battle tested and has a node-based blueprint programming system, which makes getting people who aren't programmers in on scripting much easier. I like its revenue sharing model and the fact that you can actually comb through the source yourself to see how everything works under the hood is great. For the kind of projects we want to make though, it feels like putting in a screw with a jackhammer.
And while the blueprints I mentioned are pretty cool, it's also where Epic has dedicated 90% of their documentation efforts. The C++ documentation is seriously lacking, which as the guy who writes the C++ kind of concerns me. A great tool, but probably not the right one for this job. Godot, Godot, however you want to pronounce it. It's the new hip kid in town right now. 100% free and open source, which is fantastic, but it's kind of lacking in a number of areas. This is only natural as it's been around for the fraction of the time Unreal and Unity have been, but that relative newcomerness is also a bit of a concern. There haven't been any large scale releases done with Godot yet, which would be really helpful for seeing how the engine handles scale. And a lot of the workflow issues I have with importing art in Unity also apply here. Though they're not quite as bad in Godot, and while it's a smaller gripe, it uses GDScript, Godot script, which is based on Python, a language I'm not very fond of. These alone aren't deal breakers, but the lack of baked in console support is. Godot's a pretty cool engine, but I don't think I'm ready to use it yet. Huh, it's almost like none of the pre-existing game engines work. Uh-oh, I hope I'm not getting a really bad idea to write my own engine from scop. This is where you stop right now and don't do what I'm doing. Probably. Making an engine or a game looks pretty easy when you smother on some YouTube magic, but allow me to stomp up and down on everyone's dreams with my you must be this tall to make poor decisions about your trajectory as a game dev sign. Making a custom engine with Scratch comes with a lot of challenges, and if you don't already have a decent amount of experience with software development or game development, do not make your own engine full stop. See, it's similar to the reason why so many game devs will tell you to make Pong as your first project instead of the massive MMO RPG roguelike Metroidvania that you've been dreaming of since you were four, but okay, fuck it, here we go. We're doing this now, we're doing this now. Alex's fun and hilarious tangent about scope and why your dream game makes me want to carve my eyes out. Apologies for the incoming rant here, but I don't know how so many game devs got this idea into their head that their first project is gonna be their magnum opus. And if you're a beginner dev who's guilty of falling into this, you don't expect to make the next Da Vinci when you start writing music. Staying in the video, fuck you, fight me. But that's where I see so many people trying to start off. Years spent on dream projects, which are just kind of frankly wasted. You will learn so, so, so much more from making and releasing lots of little projects than working on one massive project, which realistically will probably never even be released. It's not super obvious at first, but game development is kind of unique in that it involves learning several skills all at once if you're trying to go at it alone. You need to get a handle on programming, which if you're tackling it with no prior experience, isn't always super easy. Languages are frustrating and kind of fucking weird. Then if you're on your own, you also need to learn how to draw because a game with only white squares isn't actually going to sell any copies. And then you need some music where your new epic, amazing original protagonist makes it, grows and emerges from their lowest point as a new person. And then there needs to be some sound effects for the climax of the game where the player storms a huge castle. It's glorious, by the way. There's cannons blazing, people combusting, but then you also need to keep a keen eye for design to know just where to place said cannons while keeping in mind the larger scope of the game in the context of its goals and objectives. And do you see the problem here? Like learning how to make one games isn't just one skill. Absolute best case, it's maybe four, even more if you're soloing it. Please don't shoot yourself in the foot. Make Pong, make Snake, make Tetris, make a platformer that lasts no more than 10 minutes and repeat increment, learn from your mistakes, release your games, even if they're basic, look at what worked, use that and repeat over and over and over and over again and work your way towards that dream game rather than leaping for it from the start and concussing yourself in Idiot Valley. I guarantee you by the time you reach it, that game will look completely different. And most importantly, remember all, it, uh, right, this is a video about a custom game engine, not Alex's frustration with Reddit game dev stuff. Right, back on track. That may have been a bit of a tangent, but the tangent had a purpose. If you're starting out, don't shoot yourself in the foot by trying to make an engine along with your game, get a lot of experience making games, and then go for it, maybe. When starting out, the engine you use is never the limiting factor. And I rant about this because I don't want anyone's takeaway from this video being, I should write my own engine. If it is, please let me know so I can block you on my YouTube channel, which you should probably subscribe to because I worked super duper hard on this video. Now, right, with all that out of the way, the great friend framework hunt had begun, and as nice as it would be, you can't just drop make engine into a file and call it a day. Something needs to actually, you know, build the window, get input from the player, and draw stuff. That's where these libraries and frameworks come in. These usually handle a lot of the cross-platform backend stuff, so you aren't writing too much new code for every place you want to stick your game. With that said, tried and tested are generally good things when you're about to embark on an architectural and design nightmare, so the first framework I checked out was the ubiquitous SDL2. 
SDL2 can do so many things that it's kind of hard to dilute it down into just one sentence. It creates windows, gets input from controllers and keyboards, plays audio, displays graphics, and allows the code you write with it to be relatively easily ported across to a bunch of different platforms, which is nice if you're a game developer. I actually wrote a crappy Mario test project using it just about a yearish ago. Also, it's everywhere, even inside your computer right now. Woo! That was a bad bit. Tons of games use it, even if it's just to get a basic window up and going. So all of this sounds great, but it got knocked off the contender list pretty quickly when I found out its graphics drawing functions had no support for pixel shaders. For everyone watching who isn't a nerd, pixel shaders let you smack a GPU a bunch and tell it to draw pixels differently. I used it in the aforementioned Psychron to recolor the player. Also, honorable mention, trying to set up a C++ development environment on Windows, it sucks! Well, if shaders are so important, then why don't you marry them? OpenGL. I'm dumb and OpenGL humbled me. If you're ever feeling overly confident in your abilities as a programmer, I invite you to go and give OpenGL or a similar low-level graphics library a spin. While SDL2 is a C library with C++ bindings, OpenGL really makes you feel like you're using a C library, which in my opinion isn't fun. C is kind of a pain in the ass. Just ask anyone who isn't a C programmer. Beyond trying to wrap my head around VAOs, VBOs, and important information about matrices that I really should have paid attention to in school, debugging graphics programming is also kind of a nightmare. What did I fuck up here? It could be like 20 different things. I have no idea, and that's part of the problem. If anyone watching is crazy enough to try this, go check out learnopengl.com. My OpenGL adventures were rather humbling and pretty short-lived thanks to my peanut brain. And with that, I was- But wait, there's always pie game. <laughs>